so this is the housing complex where I live. Uh, they've been doing some work on the exterior of the building, which is why the bamboo scaffoldings are there. Anyway, uh, to get from the main door of my flat to the nearest grocery store takes literally less than a minute. And uh, it's just right downstairs. It's right here. So this one, it's it's a bit pricier than, say, compared to the web market, which we'll get to later. And there is a movie theater right there, right across from the grocery store, and uh, uh, a street food place right here, with some snacks like fish balls and stuff. There's also a breakfast place to the right called Beans uh, that you can't really see. Uh, and there's a couple more other food options here. Uh, pret manger Coffee Place, and uh, Maxim Food Square, which is more of like a Chinese fast food place. And you have your jewelry stores here, and your kind of luxury watch store. And uh, yeah, to the right are the escalators to get up to one of the malls. Yeah, you can see here. And on uh, up on the pillar, the column there, are some ads for some more food options. And here, I'm walking to... Uh, <coughs> there's this local clinic. Uh, throughout Hong Kong, sometimes you hear these tunes. I don't know if you can hear it too well here. Anyway, they're they're here to guide the hearing impaired to to uh, the 3D maps that you saw. Uh, yeah, so here's the other mall. Lots of jewelry stores to the right, right here, which I I've never understood how so many of them can stay in business in Hong Kong. Uh, back here is a bakery. There are a lot of bakeries in Hong Kong, uh, which is something that's perhaps. Uh, not something that's that's well known outside of Hong Kong. Uh, they're for the most part pretty decent, but more importantly, they're usually very accessible and pretty affordable. Here we go down some escalators, and right behind the you know tucked underneath the escalators is a Starbucks. So we're pretty good at using up every bit of space here. More stores here. Nothing special. Nothing special. Selling handbags, and there's a Zara, I think, to the right. And we're now about three minutes into our walk, and we're already at the subway station. Uh, I probably could have gotten here faster if I didn't wander around as much. Yeah, so more stores, some fast food options, selling some buns and some fresh uh, pork jerky, and also 7-Eleven. Uh, okay. Oh, by the way, the this station is not underground. In fact, it's it's elevated. So this whole time, I haven't gotten to the 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 ground floor yet, which is here. You'll see. Uh, so this road is the main art arterial road in East Kowloon. And now we'll uh, walk across it on the skywalk towards uh, the public housing on the other side. So there's another highway, I think, parallel to this main arterial road closer to the coastline. Uh, yes, uh, even Hong Kong wasn't immune to the somewhat stupid idea of building highways along waterfront kind of, you know, prime real estates. Uh, I guess it's because back then, uh, this a the area, the coastal area, was mostly occupied by factories, which preferred waterfront access to like dumping waste and stuff. And then the old airport was also nearby, so the area wasn't, you know, too desirable for housing. But that's changed now. I don't know. Maybe maybe they'll bury that highway at some point. But yeah, here you can see there's a football court to the left, uh, where they have some folk festivals sometimes. Uh, the hill back there, you can see, is uh, where we'll be going later in the video. And there's some jogging tracks down there. And <coughs> yeah, coming up is the public housing. And if we turn back to the right, you see the, the subway train approaching the station. 
and that's kind of where we came from uh, at the beginning of the video and uh, you can see the headquarters of MTR right there yeah so the station is called Kowloon Bay and we're walking to the Altau Gok estate uh, that you saw just saw a sign up there and this is uh, a public housing uh, this one uh, this complex this estate I guess was uh, completely rebuilt uh, torn down and rebuilt in the 2000s so my grandparents used to live in this estate in its previous form I guess so things are a bit newer compared to the average uh, public housing so you have your playgrounds that you just saw and even some parking to the right uh, and uh, yeah, the average heights of these buildings are like 50 floors or 50 floors plus, which is pretty wild. Yeah, I don't know how someone would qualify for, I mean, could qualify for public housing and be able to afford a car in Hong Kong at the same time. But they do have uh, some parking here available. So here are some display cases showing what life was like before the area was rebuilt, which I liked. Although most people just kind of walk by it without batting an eye. Uh, some more kind of displays over here showing what the public housing used to look like with the old uh, configurations and some old furnitures and across the street here you would see there is a uh, I think what's known as a, a municipal building which houses the the wet market the see uh, out golf market down there that's the main wet market in the neighborhood which I'm not gonna go in there because I want to get to the uh, the hike uh, but there's also a library that you can see to the right and also some indoor sports facilities uh, on top of the wet market that you can rent for like a basketball court or like a badminton court or like workout equipments and stuff so as you can see I haven't encountered uh, any traffic up to this point uh, and this skywalk take me straight into the municipal building which I am uh, walking to right now. So as you can see, some uh, as you can see, there's some displays, old photos of people hanging clothes outside, and people still do. So uh, it's not too much of a uh, sight of the past, I guess. So I'm walking now into the second floor of the municipal building, which is the the cooked food center, which is just a food court. That's mostly to the left, yeah, and then to the right is where the butcher shops are. So it still count as part of the, f the wet market, I guess, but uh, all the meat stuff that's on the second floor. On the first floor is where you get your veggies and your fruits and some seafood and, and some dried stuff, tofu, that kind of stuff. So I've turned to the left and walking through the food court there's some ads saying that oh we uh, play uh, Premier League and World Cup and you know football matches here uh, live and yeah so that explains for all the flags international flags that uh, kind of <coughs> that they hung up for the food court and we're back outside so still on the si skywalk but not for long because uh, we're about to enter another mall so this one it's a little uh, it's a bit of a smaller mall which I kinda like because I think smaller malls in Hong Kong uh, tend to have more mom-and-pop stores with more interesting knickknacks to look at I think I bought my first uh, Erhu here uh, which is a, a kind of a Chinese fiddle yeah they also used to have like really cheap classes for uh, anyone to learn kind of traditional Chinese instruments in the, the there's a building right behind the municipal building so nothing special here 
you have someone who uh, fixes watch watches on the left, which is pretty interesting. Some knickknack stores, and we're back outside. Still on a skywalk, but not for long, because I am finally about to get onto the ground floor. So Hong Kong has been doing okay, adding a lot of elevators, uh, as you, you just saw on the left there, to kind of improve accessibility, which really helps uh, parents with strollers as well. So here it's a little bit of uh, like a bus terminal that you see that is connected to the skywalk. And there's a little park right here that uh, on my left that I didn't get into. And I am about to cross the only street between my living room and the hiking trail right here. Yeah, by the way, there's no turning on red in Hong Kong, which is nice. Yeah, here you see the iconic red taxi of Hong Kong and the double decker bus. Sorry for jaywalking here. Don't do what I do. Here is uh, yeah. So what you just heard is also the the kind of like uh, audio cue for the hearing impaired to know when to cross the road. The clicking. And here's the driveway coming up into the parking lot for the local swimming pool, the public swimming pool. It's a pretty nice pool, but uh, yeah, Hong Kong has this weird law of not allowing any sort of filming near swimming pools because of apparently, you know, perverts who don't have access to the internet. And here you see what used to be a storm drain that they kind of beautified over the last couple years, maybe 10 years. I, I don't really know exactly when they do it. But uh, yeah, I think they did a pretty nice job because it used to be just like a open sewer. So here I'm walking on an uh, access road here. So it's okay. There's no traffic. You can kind of see the pool to my right. They have a lot of these public water park like pools, which are they're really nice for kids and they usually cost around like 19 Hong Kong dollars I think is is how much they cost now in 2023 which translates to about uh, like two dollar fifty in US dollars yeah so here we can see there's the big shallow pools and then there the, the deeper pools are to the right and on the other side here, there are some tennis courts. So everywhere in Hong Kong, you you see old people doing exercises outdoors. I guess I'm one of them, or I'm becoming one of them. Uh, they're usually less organized than the old people you see in other Chinese cities, which you know uh, would do synchronized dances and stuff. But they're still pretty active in general. But they're relatively solitary. Sol solitary? Yeah, solitary. Unless uh, if you go really early in the morning, then you do have groups doing uh, Tai Chi. So people just hanging out. And <coughs> to the left, yes. So in the back, there <coughs> is one of my favorite, uh, I guess you can call it like a secret or a hidden gem of my neighborhood. It's a little temple, kind of tucked uh, in the like the foot of this mountain to the right. Uh, you actually have to walk through the temple to get to the head of uh, a uh, hiking trail to go up that mountain. But the, that trail, it's a little bit... It's a little bit too long for this video, so I, I won't go all the way uh, into the temple. 
I, I do have a running point of view video where I did run through the temple and go all the way up to the the top of that mountain or hill I guess so you can take a look if you want to so yeah today we're going up this uh, an, an another uh, different a different trail that's a little bit more beat up but uh, it's a little bit shorter maybe a little bit more dramatic yeah so <coughs> these are the two hills I think it's called uh, one of the hill so right now we're in a valley between two hills one of the hill to the which side I'm trying to think to on the on the east is someone san so right now uh, we're looking towards the north kind of and the mountain to the to the right it's someone san and the one to the left is peng san i think i'm not entirely sure and those two hills are about i think like 600 feet tall something like that yeah so not too tall but they're part of a uh, taller mountain. Uh, they're they're kind of attached to. They they kind of part of the main mountain range of Kowloon, uh, which I'm not sure if you can see the peak right behind the peak that you can see on the r on the left, which is uh, Kowloon Peak. So that's the tallest peak that I can I guess technically walk to from where I live. Uh, within like a reasonable amount of time uh, and that peak is uh, about 2,000 feet tall so here is the same storm drain that we saw earlier so there was actually a reservoir up on top of this hill uh, like a couple decades ago but they've since filled it in uh, but the dam is still there and it's actually where uh, we're going today So the stairs to the right, right there, by the way, if you want to climb up some really steep inclines, uh, <coughs> guided by ropes, uh, you, you, you can find some squatter huts up there. I've never actually seen anyone there, like living in them, but it's, it's pretty interesting still. I wonder if there are just people who just kind of hang out there sometimes. Maybe they are homeless people who choose to have kind of different spots uh, throughout the city that they choose where to be where, where to spend the night I, I don't know I need to probably do some more research but you can find these kind of random huts in the most remote parts of Hong Kong sometimes like hours from the nearest road so now we already just maybe two three minutes away from the main road you can you really can't really hear the the traffic anymore yeah be quiet for a minute here just enjoy the hike So sometimes you will find some interesting wildlife on these hikes. Uh, I did see a monkey once. Uh, the macaques, I guess. They're quite common, but not super common in Hong Kong. Uh, if you go further away from cities, you also see wild boars, which are quite dangerous. Uh, but there, there are also all kinds of interesting insects, too, like the can't remember the name of the whole class of uh, oh mealy bugs I guess which is not just a kind of bug it's a whole class of bugs without like a hard uh, exterior shell so you'll find some really crazy looking fluffy mealy bugs here and here we see uh, part of the dam that is still working as a uh, storm drain and we're near the end of the hike after this uh, last flight of stairs
other insects are uh, dragonflies they're everywhere you also see uh, cicadas in the summer and also uh, grasshoppers like after it rains I think there is usually a lot of grasshoppers I don't know why so you can see some kind of squatter uh, architecture like uh, structures I guess <laughs> just there just random huts that someone built and now we're on top of the dam if I keep walking until uh, all the way to the other side of this dam there is another unmarked trail that will take me up to a park on top of the hill on the other side where there's like a whole other uh, housing project and a couple malls and stuff and sometimes I'll, I'll go all the way up there and then run back down along the main road w which is bad for my knees but I'm usually too sweaty and self-conscious to get on a bus by the time I'm up there to go back home but anyway here's the view uh, and we are at the 21 minute mark uh, of the video so from the concrete jungle of where I lived all the way down there that you can't really even see from this point uh, it takes me 20 minutes to get up here enjoy the view